DJ Cooper may be one of the most impressive and best players to learn from that you've never heard of. Whether you've heard of him or not, he's averaging over 11 assists a game in the LNB Pro A, which is the first league in France. And I want y'all to understand before we get into anything how crazy that is. Number one, it's a hell of a league with tons of NBA level talent, but it's also a 40 minute game, a way slower game pace wise than the NBA, and pretty physical too. So if you scale it up to NBA pace in minutes, it's pretty much equivalent to averaging 15, 16 assists a game in the league. That's absurd. Oh, and he's just six foot. In the NBA, the traditional point guard is kind of disappearing a bit. Not fully, but it's definitely not as popular or highly regarded. But around the world and at the college level, it's still going strong and it will be for the foreseeable future. So learning to play this way and control the game like this, especially from players outside of the NBA, is a very, very important thing to do and study if you're a guard, especially an undersized one. So I'm excited to show you guys this breakdown. There are definitely things in here that I've never even been able to break down with some NBA players. And I'll give you some tips on how to work on these things as well. Let's get to it. So one of the first things I noticed watching his film is how good he is finding windows for passes. As a point guard, this is definitely one of the most underrated skills out there. And it's just being able to actually deliver the passes when you have defenders and their arms in the way. Can you actually get this ball through to your teammate? Because a lot of players can see the open teammates, but it's often just too tough of a pass to get through. So if you can get really good at finding these little windows of space to get the passes through, it'll open up everything. Like for example, even most high level passers will see this teammate open, but it'll probably be like, ah, I can't really get it there safely. But he's able to find this window and make that work. And what makes this even tougher is that oftentimes it's not just one defender to get through, but at least two. Like here, he's got to pass through this window so it doesn't get deflected here, and then also goes over this defender and then reaches the teammate comfortably. So there aren't really many options to get all of that done. You have to be super creative in a ton of different situations with finding those windows. So here are some ways he makes that happen consistently. First, let's look at how he gets it around this initial defender. One very common way being these wide angles he'll utilize on the release. This definitely takes some ball control to do and even can be done with one of these big steps where he's getting that release point outside of the defender's frame or by taking a quick dribble to kind of shuffle out of their frame to again, get a better angle. Either way, finding ways to release the ball wide and outside of the defender's frame is key. Another great tool is simply using fakes, because if you can get the defender up in the air, they're almost out of the play because they can't really react or move until they hit the ground. So even just a small fake to get the defender jumping or up can be huge. Also, watch these passes off the dribble, where he doesn't make it look like a pass until the very last second. Then as the ball is on the way down, he's making that pass. This is a great way to not telegraph the pass to defenders until the ball is pretty much in the air or on the way to the teammate. And his jump passes are also elite. Despite most coaches deeming it to be a cardinal sin, at just six foot, it makes his range wider and release point higher, which is vital to get that pass over bigger defenders at times. And I've also found it to help with power too. I mean, just think about power on a shot where you jump, and then when you don't jump, kind of the same thing. And then with these float or lob passes too, since you're releasing it from higher, it gives you a little bit more touch. The rule here though, and this is something he's very good at, is that you only do this if you already have a pass in mind and a teammate open, not doing it to find one. On a similar note, he also uses these high skips a lot with the dribble. Yes, to change speed, but also it seems to get his eyes a bit higher and above the defense to improve his visibility. Another little small guard hack. And finally, consider that being lefty helps too. And since that most players don't pass with their left hand often, so defenders are subconsciously less accustomed to deflecting a pass with the left. You can reverse engineer that by simply getting really good passing with the left hand and opening up more options to get it around the defender. So now we've got an understanding of getting it by here. Then obviously you gotta make sure it gets through this window too. Let's dissect this a little bit. So first he understands when defenders have their back turned or when they're turned one way so he can make the pass on the other side of them because it's almost impossible for them to turn around fully and get to it in time when they're also sprinting back to their man. Like, he ain't getting to this one. He also uses bounce passes on many of these, which are much tougher to get to for defenders in a full sprint or who are standing straight up because they'll have to reach down to get to it. But by the time he gets to his teammate, obviously it's at a good level for them to catch. It's also easier to lead teammates this way because on longer passes, it gives them a bit of time to read it and catch it and also gives you the opportunity to spin the ball. Take note of his patience too. It allows teammates to open up or get past or create space from this second defender. And if he always passed it on the first instant that he sees that defender open, this would probably get picked off. 
So this could be taking an extra dribble, making a fake, slowing down, or even just using a slow bounce pass because it takes a little bit longer to get there than an in-air pass. He's also great at leading teammates too. Kind of like a through ball in soccer where he's putting it out ahead pretty much before they're open to allow them to catch up to it. Also, there's a concept in American football where quarterbacks will put it in a spot where only the receiver can get to it. So worst case, it's just an incompletion and not an interception. He does this a ton when he's really leading his teammate or throwing it up and over to a spot to make it super tough for the defender to get to, if not impossible. And sometimes that means making what seems like slightly worse of a pass, but also limiting risk. Like if he get this pass directly through here, it'd probably be more of a wide open layup, but that's risky as hell. So he kind of lobs it, which allows his defender to catch up a bit. It means that it's not a wide open layup, but his teammate still converts it and it had almost no risk, which brings up a concept that's super important. It's not just about diming teammates to open shots, but often just about putting them in good position to score. Many of his passes are very simple and not pretty, but it's just about giving his teammates a great opportunity to get to one of their strengths, whether it's shooting it, attacking a closeout, an easy paint touch, whatever. This probably makes up over half of his assists, and it's a skill in itself. And finally, he knows that if he can't get this pass through, it's probably because the defense has stepped over and committed to this teammate, which means the next option is open. Like here, the defender steps over, so he knows he's not going to be able to get it through, and he quickly looks past that, moves on to the next read, and makes that pass since their defender rotated to help. And this delivery of passes is something you have to work on as a player. You need reps, and a lot of them, just figuring out ways to get passes through. So maybe it's a drill like one of these, where you're getting it around a defender, or multiple of them, over and over again. Or it's live play, where you're going out, hooping, and just looking to make these tougher passes sometimes and experiment. But most players will never get this, simply because they only train in individual settings and then play real games where you can't try certain passes because you don't want to turn it over, which of course makes sense, but it has to be supplemented with training on this skill. The ones that do work on this though will separate themselves in a lot of ways. Okay, a couple more important concepts here. One of the signature qualities of elite point guards is being able to multitask. In other words, most players are only processing one thing at a time. Like when they call for this pick and roll, they're pretty much dialed into using it and playing off of that ball screen. Whereas now, as he's waiting for and setting up this screen, he's also monitoring that second and third layer of the defense, and it ends up paying off. He's also really quick at going through his reads. Most of this is probably subconscious, but it's something the best point guards do. Rather than going into a play with no plan, he's like, okay, I'm coming off a ball screen, and there's a pretty hard show here. I can't really get it to the short roll easily, and this pass to get it to the big isn't really too open either, so let me take one more dribble and see what this defender does. Oh, he stays with it. Boom, the roll is there. Or here, first option isn't open. Second also isn't the most comfortable. He's patient and waits for the third option, simple pop, to open up. So yes, his processing speed is crazy, like on this play, where he has this super short window of time to pass it through and figures out the best pass based on this defender's momentum. But also realize that it's not just about making these split second decisions, but also taking your time to elongate that decision making process and make it more composed. Like here, taking one more dribble to engage the defense a bit more and make time for himself to make the best decision possible. But despite going through these reads and seeing patterns in the game, of course, there are times where it's just way too chaotic, and he also has the ability to adapt, quickly see the floor, and find an open teammate like here. So again, one of the biggest takeaways that I want you guys to leave with from this video is that these are very important skills that may not be trained much, and we may not talk about them much, but they're extremely valuable and also fun to train. Like We understand the importance of getting your shots up or spending 15 minutes a day on your dribble, but I rarely see court vision and these passing qualities trained. So if you guys can find ways to do that, study these patterns, study these type of players, and then go out and work on these things, you're gonna separate yourself and have a role on any team. As always, thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully you left with something from this video. Make sure to check out the Virtual Academy, as well as our Summer Academy in Miami, where you can come and train with us during the summer. See you next time.